Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Mobile UX Podcast. Today, we have a very special guest with us. We have Aditya Sharma, who is quite the rap sheet. Aditya Sharma is, a project man- is part of the project management community of Apache OFBIS, Apache Roller, and the chapter lead of the indoor Apache local community. On the side, he also works at Hot Wax Commerce. He's one of the leads of the mobile apps division, specializing in Ionic and related JavaScript technologies. Today, we're going to be talking about state management and uh, what their role is in web applications. Um, so we're going to start with, in the first half, we're going to be talking about what state management is and what it means for mobile applications. And then we're going to move on to the different libraries within uh, the sphere, within what? And we're going to move on to the different libraries that exist that you can use to uh, manage states and do state management within your applications. So for un- to understand state management, we first need to understand what is a state. and. Uh, f- a state of a web application is its properties and its data at a time. So initially when uh, there were no uh, proper state management, uh, the data uh, and the properties used to flow within the component and in JS the components are uh, the communication of uh, uh, this, uh, the communication between components is uh, uh, bi-directional and not uh, multi-directional. Uh, if uh, a parent is having multiple uh, children, a parent component is having a multiple children, then uh, uh, the sibling uh, components are not uh, easily aware of uh, what uh, data, how data is manipulated by uh, its sibling. Uh, for that, uh, the child component need to emit. Uh, uh, the data uh, uh, emit the information to parent and then uh, and the uh, communication from parent to its component was uh, f- through the prop uh, which is basically prop drilling and uh, this uh, so uh, this uh, s- management of the data uh, through this pattern was really difficult and was not much scaling so uh, facebook come up with the flex pattern and they just give uh, this pattern uh, are, uh, about uh, how we should deal with that state, current state of the application. So they, uh, what they came up with uh, is they told us that we should define a, a proper data structure uh, of the data and uh, that data should be a single point of truth kept. Uh, at one place and all the components uh, will be accessing those data using uh, some mutations uh, in Vuex we use mutation other technologies have uh, different terminologies but all components are accessing that single source of truth uh, with themselves and uh, they don't need to uh, communicate between each other to uh, tell the change of data and all components are uh, actually uh, seeing uh, w- uh, actually watching uh, the changes in data and reflecting at the same time so uh, the whole data flow is now a single source of truth which is accessible to all the component and uh, for the uh, web page or website okay to understand it uh, in a more simpler way uh, mm-hmm. adding to what ashwarya told us uh, i think we should uh, definitely look at uh, through the perspective of its history Right. Okay. So, if I talk about uh, the inception of uh, the state management, we should definitely look how the web applications or the front-end technologies evolved. Mm. Right. So, if you look into it, uh, we'll see like initially we used to have the web application being uh, delivered to the client from the backend itself, where, mm. where we have we had templating technologies out there like free marker or through JSP or something like that and that uh, from that to the single page applications where the entire application resides on the client side right and uh, now uh, it's the responsibility of the client side technology to uh, get the data from the backend mm. and show it to the user and give give him a really good user uh, experience with that now here uh, when uh, with such uh, situation out there or such a, uh, such scenario uh, now it becomes the responsibility of right. uh, the client, client side, side language, language or technology 
to manage those those data yes, that right. used to be uh, from the back end itself yes, and it used to manage on server side exactly right so here uh, what happens is uh, we are uh, in in single page applications we do api calls out there we right. get some data hmm. and there are different components out there who are manipulating this data we are making simultaneous uh, apis api calls along uh, to update it at the back end server as hmm. well now the uh, thing here is when that data is being manipulated it should reflect right in uh, other across components. all the components yeah in the sh uh, the components that are sh uh, having that data as the shared mm -hmm. one and it, it's not uh, that visible to update uh, the local instances of every component right. so there has to be some centralized uh, uh, point uh, where uh, uh, a centralized location of data where it is changed and it is being transmitted to all the components right there. so there comes the state management system in place so um, uh, here uh, many of the libraries do support that intrinsically and many need uh, some external library i feel uh, though uh, this thing is uh, uh, the, these libraries are handy or uh, they are uh, available uh, there with a uh, really good documentation and uh, much of a support uh, we need to think uh, about uh, getting them into the project uh, uh, whether they are needed or not Very like uh, uh, if i talk about even redux hmm. if you read the blogs by uh, by dan uh, the author of redux hmm. he himself uh, in numerous blogs he told uh, about uh, not uh, using redux if it's not needed yes like uh, every app does not need a full fledged library for the state management sometimes things can be simply done using uh, the shared variables or shared data yeah, the, right the things available in the, uh, hmm. the supported by the library itself right correct if you for a simple application you are just getting a complex library into place yes. you are making uh, your own job difficult yeah, like exactly. uh, i totally agree if uh, someone is making a very small app or not a very scalable thing uh, then uh, he don't need to create a full data structure and then makes uh, some uh, functions around changing that data uh, data and then calling it from another function uh, these things are only necessary for a uh, enterprise level uh, more scalable thing and not for a very simple application so it should uh, the developer should really think whether he use such libraries or not so aditya i have um, i've seen that uh, you have uh, uh, good experience in uh, these libraries different libraries in ngrx redux angular so can you please show some uh, throw some light on how these are different or uh, why they are uh, multiple libraries and how these libraries works like i have uh, i just uh, knew about vuex as i am uh, working on vue so i know that uh, there is a, we defined a state there is some getter action mutations and uh, along with this we use uh, the state and manipulate data and manages the state so how uh, things are done in uh, other technologies okay uh, mostly the idea is same like if i uh, i i do have experience working on uh, view storefront as well yes, uh, yes. in uh, with vuex hmm. and uh, I, I do have experience with the angular part as well so uh, here we uh, use the ng access library hmm. so if i talk about the holistic idea or the overall idea about it the most of the libraries have a uh, similar patterns with that mm -hmm. like uh, uh, the way i see it uh, when i talk about vuex we have getters right similarly in ng access uh, we have the selectors out there uh, if uh, i talk talk about actions similarly we have actions here as well store uh, dis uh, dispatch dispatcher so simil uh, most of the things are similar hmm. uh, maybe uh, some of the libraries uh, i have seen uh, I, I i do worked on some other as well like i worked on redux as well uh, what i found is uh, uh, most of the libraries have the similar pattern uh, the different things that i uh, i found is uh, like uh, some of them support multiple stores some okay. some have a single single source of truth 
but uh, when i talk about redux it mm. it it is having a single source of truth so okay. just one store so this distinction i found uh, other libraries uh, have a, a different uh, kind of uh, pattern based upon the technology technology is they are based on yeah so Correct. such kind of uh, differences so what is a good like way to for a developer to understand when they need a full fledged state management library in their app and like what's like uh what would be a way to easy way to gauge whether you need it or not when your application is uh it's something dealing with a really complex scenarios it's it's a huge application and that too with complex business scenarios mm. in that case where the shared data needs to be Uh, uh mutated mm-hmm. f- uh, by numerous components and to be consumed by them mm. in that case definitely a state management library should be there so for example we talk about view storefront a lot so would you say something like an e-commerce application or an e-commerce website is something that deserves a full-fledged state management system absolutely yeah because uh, uh, with time uh, the e-commerce is also growing mm-hmm. and right the uh, the scenarios that it used to cover initially just uh, uh, just placing a order from that now it is expanding to omni channel scenarios where you can uh, have store pick up orders and not just that you have numerous payment options available out there numerous shipping options available out mm-hmm. there mm-hmm. so now the complexity of an e-commerce web app has uh drastically changed right, right. so definitely uh, this thing should be there okay so-